Alrighty, my agents, this is specifically for my industry professionals and included with lenders. I want this to be a fully encompass, what do you call it, encompassing <laughs> video talking specifically about the settlement and how the changes affect our business. So this is no longer a head in the sand situation. If you have waited until August to learn about this, it's time to perk up, put on your blue light glasses and tune in, take some notes, save this video and even share it with a coworker who you know has been sleeping on it. Changes are here. It's officially August 4th at the time of this recording and the changes just start August 17th. So what do I want you to know? Number one, you got to know what the settlement is. This is like an obvious like make sense, but your clients are going to be asking, what is a settlement? What do you mean? You guys got sued? Like there's a lot of concern and there's a lot of curiosity when it comes to the changes that the National Association of Realtors has put into place. So you got to know what it is, right? So number one, go Google real quick, put it in chat GPT. What is the NAR settlement of 2024? Okay. Second thing, now that it is upon us, you should be practicing and knowing these forms inside out right now and getting ready to use these every single day. So I know our brokerage team at eXp has been doing a great job. Um, our CEO has been putting out great videos and educational content. And then intimately with our local market, we've been having some agent panel meetups to say, how are you going to handle this situation? What are the scripts you're going to use? And if you don't have that community, now's the time to pop into your office or ask your friend online or ask me on Instagram. I'm more than happy to respond or even on this video in the comments below, but there's just so much misinformation and confusion. It really isn't the most complicated thing. You just have to know and like take five minutes to read the documents. Okay. So what I want you to know Know, most importantly from this video is you have choices, but there are some changes. So number one, we know MLS compensation into buyer's agents will no longer be posted on that site. Now you are going to have to negotiate your buyer's agent fee directly with your client, not getting paid from the listing side. So that's step number one, which means rolls into step number two, you need to know what you're worth, right? What are you going to charge your client? If you haven't had that thought for a while, we're pretty typically used to two to two and a half percent. But what if your buyer can't pay that? Do you have a plan? Do you have a way to explain to them your value and working with them. We know that 86% of buyers ended up using buyer's agents last year. And I don't think that number is going to go down. I think in fact, it's going to go up because they're going to need that representation to even get into a home. So no longer can you show a home to a random buyer on Zillow or someone who strolled through an open house, start showing them a couple homes and then wish by good luck that they end up working with you. That was kind of how it worked before where we would work in good faith, work for free. We would spend time away from our friends and family to hopefully convince someone to work with us, right? That was kind of a throw something at the wall and see if it's sticked. Well, now the second that someone inquires to see a home, and this is why I think a lot of the industry is going to shift to more listing focused, is that you are going to have to sign a document immediately to say, I am agreeing to work with this buyer's agent either for a day, for a property, for a couple days, for a time period, and for this specific amount. We cannot be ambiguous or too vague about what you're going to charge. You're going to have to say, I specifically charge 2.5% or 2% or maybe even 1.5% depending on the client or a dollar amount or an hourly rate. And so we might have to do some math here and be like, okay, if I sold 25 homes in the last year and I made X amount of dollars and I divide that by a 40 hour work week, how much is your hourly worth, right? That's a really great way to look at this. Or if you're planning to sell at a higher luxury price point, what is your dollar worth? Or are you willing to work more and get paid the same amount. This is something that's interesting. So some people have said that they think buyer's agent commissions might go down to one to one and a half percent. I surely hope it doesn't because I really feel like the right agents, the ones who are doing the 20% or the 80% of all the business with the 20% of agents should get paid what they're worth. It's unfortunate that a lot of our agents are hobby agents. I think the ones that do it as a business should get paid like business owners. You're going to have to know your worth is my point. Got to know what you're worth. Got to be able to confidently say to your client's eyes, this is how much I charge. And these are all the reasons why I'm worth this. You have to be able to clearly express your ability to negotiate, to network, to list, to also help them find a home, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I know for myself, you don't just hire me, you hire my team, right? So not only do I have an amazing executive assistant, Rose, my paychecks help pay for her cost of living, right? Not only do I have a transaction coordinator who's amazing and she runs the show behind every single transaction, you pay for Marissa's quality of life, right? You're not just paying me and myself to go travel the world and sit on the beach, right? We are actually paying a team of people. And so when the consumer starts to realize who's actually a business owner versus who's just so-and-so's uncle or cousin that just got their real estate license and they're just 
figuring this stuff out, I think that'll start to kind of shake it out. Another thing I kind of project is that we know over 50% of lenders actually left the industry in 2023. I certainly hope that doesn't happen with, with the real estate industry because I think we've got a really great group of agents, but I do foresee a lot of people leaving the industry, which just simply means there's gonna be more business for those of us who are in it for the long haul, right? So realizing that. The, the last thing I wanna leave you with for all my realtors, and this is for both sides, not just the buyer side, but also the listing side, your relationships with your lenders are now more critical than ever before. No more can we just have, like sometimes we have lender relationships where we might partner up on lead gen and they just happen to be like a sponsor kind of relationship. You're gonna have to intimately work with your lenders and really understand who has a sweet spot in this, who masters the VA niche, who masters the conventional or the 1031 exchange or whatever. And when we're in that zone, you've got to work with them on a property to property basis now, consulting with our buyer to be able to educate them on how to pay for your buyer's agent compensation or how to get great credit and come up with a win-win strategy. Because this is literally, as a buyer's agent, I'm thinking, well, number one, I need to pay myself with seller credit because I don't want my buyer to pay for myself if they don't have to. And number two, I have to make sure that we're gonna appraise at value, if not above value, and I gotta protect the seller's bottom line. So there's three pillars that our lenders are gonna have to work with here to make sure that it's a win-win and our buyers get what they want and our sellers get what they want. So just a little bit more attention to detail not so much throw it at the wall and see what sticks. It's definitely, we're going in as surgeons in 2024. And I want you guys to feel confident and excited. These are good changes. It just takes a lot of education, not only on the professional side, but now on the consumer side to be able to clearly articulate your value and how the processes work. So know the paperwork, make sure you talk with your broker team. Every company is gonna be different. So what EXP is doing might not be what Keller Williams is doing, might not be what Coldwell is doing. Like I know for EXP, we're not using the Hawaii um, Association of Realtors paperwork, we have our own amendment, I think it is, specifically for our company. So know that kind of stuff. Last thing, start practicing now. Don't wait until August 17th to actually put this into place. Start doing it now. And I wanna be a resource for you guys. So if you wanna hop on a Zoom call, strategy call, I can email you resources, let me know. But make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's always a new video every single Friday too that's really helpful for you to get on top of things. I don't want you to have your head in the sand anymore. Wake up and let's get to work. I'll see you next Friday. Thank you.